from the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrilee Joyce. And good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce. This is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, missing and murdered Native American women and girls, our look at what one Nevada leader is doing to stop this horrendous and growing problem. And that leader is my guest today. She is Nevada U.S. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. Thanks for being here. Today. Oh, I'm always happy to be here. It's Thank good to you. see you. Right now, the U.S. Senate is considering three pieces of legislation that my guest says are nothing short of critical to saving the lives of Native American women and girls. And today on Ion Washington, we'll tell you about the crisis that led my guest to lead the Congress on this issue. We'll learn about her bills to help prevent violent crime against Native American women and girls. And we'll ask her about other legislation she's pushing that would help Native American law enforcement officials to more easily and efficiently fight crimes on tribal lands. Too many families are lying awake at night wondering what happened to their wives and daughters, their sisters and their cousins. That's what Senator Cortez Mastos told the National Native American Law Enforcement Association in late August. And these shocking statistics from her office make her point. More than 80 percent of Native American women will experience physical, sexual or psychological violence in their lifetimes, often in the form of domestic or intimate partner violence. One in three Native American women have been raped or have, been, have experienced an attempted rape. Murder is the third leading cause of death for Native American women and girls. And if that were not horrible enough, Native American women who experience sexual or domestic violence are far more likely to fall victim to sex trafficking. So, Senator, first, welcome back to Ion Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to talk all about what you're doing legislatively to mm -hmm. combat uh, th this horrific, horrific violence against Native American women and children. But I think we need to spend this segment first telling our audience what got you so involved in all this. I, I don't think this situation is well known, and it's certainly not being well dealt right. with. That's correct. And you know, but before I was uh, had the privilege of being a uh, U.S. Senator from Nevada, I was Attorney General for eight years. And I, I really worked on domestic violence prevention uh, throughout the state of Nevada. I chaired Domestic Violence Prevention Council. But most importantly, there are 27 tribes in the state of Nevada. And they were always part of my council. They were members. We always talked about how we address domestic violence and really violence against Native American women and children in, in our tribes. Um, and so this is something we've always worked with, uh, our tribes. When I got to the Senate, I asked to be on Senate Indian Affairs because I wanted to continue the work that our tribes need on behalf of our federal government and the resources that they are looking for. There was a colleague of mine who was on Senate Indian Affairs with me. Her name was Heidi Heidkamp. She's from North Dakota. Mm. And she was the one that really was the most vocal about this issue. Uh, this issue of there's no data collection. We don't know. There's, there's right. Native American women and children, they're missing. And what do we do about it? Why aren't we doing anything? I had done a lot of work in the state on sex trafficking prevention, uh, reducing violence against women and children, uh, and realized working with Heidi and uh, along with Lisa Murkowski, who uh, sure. this Republican senator from Alaska, who's also on Indian Affairs, mm -hmm. that we, we need to do something to address this and highlight it. That's the work that we have done together to really focus, bring legislation and really focus attention uh, on what's happening in our tribal communities across this country. So, you know, the, the violent statistics that I mentioned are, are terrible enough in themselves, but when you add that human trafficking uh, element, it, it, it makes things even more frightening. In fact, uh, during an address to the, uh, the U.S. Senate last spring, you told your colleagues that we don't even know the true scope of the problem because half of a Native American law enforcement agencies say it's under-reporting. Um, so I guess uh, that that's was right. part of your impetus as and well. And that's the point, because what we know that uh, if, if they go missing, what is, what is happening there? And after talking with the tribal law enforcement in our state and across the country, realizing 
We don't collect the data. We don't know. And there are concerns because sex trafficking is happening. And it really is a modern day form of slavery, right? Sure, sure. And, and sexual exploitation against Native American women and children. We don't know. We, we can't. We're not tracking. We're not collecting the information. And But most importantly, we also have to educate our law enforcement so they can identify it. They can recognize what's going on and identify it and then help us work to, to collect that data so we can bring more right. programs and preventions and resources towards this area. And collecting that data, uh, uh, people being able to work together as, as, as a team, th this is missing. You, you said uh, um, uh, and maybe a big impetus behind your effort can be summed up. Uh, here's another quote in your spring statement uh, on the floor. You said, quote, because of a lack of coordination with federal agencies, sparse resources, and limited jurisdiction to prosecute crimes, women across Indian country are dying and disappearing, and far too many of their cases go underreported, unsolved, or untouched by law enforcement. This is unbelievable, yet there is no targeted federal plan or strategy to address this epidemic. That's right. Thus, the two bills, they're compatible with one another, which is Savannah's Act and, and the Not Invisible about. Act, right. right? So Savannah's Act is really the legislation that really focused on uh, bringing attention to what was going on, right? And we are going to get to that in our next segment mm -hmm. because we just happened to run out of time as you brought right. up those bills. And when we return, Senator Cortez Masto's multi-pronged effort to halt the domestic violence, murder, and human trafficking of Native American women and girls. We're going to have those legislative details right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce, brought to you by Caesars Entertainment the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, NV Energy, Jim Marsh Automotive and Body Shop, the Rogich Communications Group, and Renown Health. I have three tests next week. I'm gonna be studying all weekend. Oh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until six. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. The state of Nevada licenses and inspects a range of health facilities, from hospitals and nursing homes to surgery centers, halfway houses, treatment centers, and more. Inspection and complaint information are available free online at findahealthfacility.nv.gov. You can search for individual facilities or by facility type and by city or county. You should always choose a licensed healthcare facility to ensure the highest standards for provision of care. Again, to find licensing and inspection information, visit findahealthfacility.nv.gov. I got my own iPod Touch and used my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? This is a storm drain. It collects stormwater. Grass clippings, fertilizer, yard waste, they all contaminate our stormwater. Litter, pet waste, they also contaminate it. Fluids from leaking vehicles, run right in there. All stormwater goes untreated directly to our local waterways. Keep contaminants out of our storm drains and out of our waters. Join us in preserving Nevada's waters for future generations. And welcome back to Eye on Washington and our look at what one Nevada senator is doing to protect the lives of Native American women and girls. She is my guest today, Nevada U.S. Senator Catherine Cortez Nasco. Thank you. When my guest addressed the Senate last May on the violence against women and girls on tribal land, she was stressing the need to reauthorize one bill as well as to pass two bills she recently authored. The bill awaiting what she calls crucial reauthorization is the Violence Against Women Act, whose aim, of course, is to halt violence against wives or female partners. And while she says that legislation is hugely important, 
Senator Cortez Masto says more is needed to extend these protections to tribal lands. So she's introduced the Savannah Act, which directs the Attorney General to develop law enforcement and justice protocols to address missing and murdered Native American women and girls, and the Not Invisible Act, which would increase intergovernmental coordination to identify violent crime within Indian lands and of Indians. So, Senator, before, uh, before coming to the Hill, you were, of course, as you said, Nevada Attorney General. In that capacity, what did you hear directly from, say, survivors, family members, uh, tribal leaders, law enforcement on native lands, et cetera, about the need for action to address this type of violence? We talked about it all the time because I, I chaired uh, and appointed members to the statewide uh, Attorney General's Domestic Violence Prevention Council. Uh, and so any type of violence against women and children uh, we had discussions, and I always had tribal members as part of that. So I knew, I knew these issues were happening, and I, we talked specifically about it, because if you know anything about tribal communities, particularly in Nevada and across this country, not all of them have law enforcement, right? Not all of them are able to actually investigate and or prosecute crimes against women and children, sure. uh, because just of the jurisdictional and sovereignty issues you have at the federal level. Um, so there are always challenges. That's why the, the laws that you just talked about from the VAWA, which is the reauthorization that gives more teeth and more resources mm -hmm. to tribal communities to address these issues in their law enforcement, to Savannah's Act and Not Invisible, really focuses and brings local, state, and tribal communities the ability to come together, share information, learn proper protocols, right, and then and share that information with the federal agencies that have also jurisdiction sure. over this, right? So it's kind of bifurcated jurisdiction. You need to have all the players together. So the Not Invisible Act then brings the federal piece and all those federal agencies to the table as well. Mm -hmm. Requires them to work with all of these other communities sure. and stakeholders, creates a, a really a, a key person that is kind of the, the coordinator to coordinate amongst all of these various agencies at all levels to collect the data, to make sure we're bringing resources, to focus on what law enforcement needs are, and to really make sure that at the end of the day, this is what it's about. Our tribal communities need to have a voice, and they need to be at the table, and we need to be right. listening to them. You, you know, I, it's not obviously specific to Native lands, but I, I do want to let you quickly mention why it's crucial to reauthorize the Violence Against Women Act. I, I saw a report that said between its 1994 passage and 2010, there was a 64% uh, percent decrease in intimate parlor, uh, partner violence. Yeah, so let me, let me if you let me take a few minutes just to talk about it, because I'm very familiar with VAWA, because as Attorney General, the money came into the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, we expanded VAWA to include our tribal communities so that domestic violence prevention and prosecution could occur in our tribal communities. This reauthorization allows us to go after more violence crimes against women that include not just domestic violence, but other crimes like stalking and rape. Mm -hmm. And it gives more resources to tribal law enforcement to take action. This is the fight now. So it's a now. great expansion. It's a great expansion, and we should be doing it. Sure. And there's bipartisan support for it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we return, she says legislation to halt domestic violence on Native lands can't be very effective if Native American law enforcement agencies don't have the resources needed to do their jobs, and she wants to rectify that. We're going to tell you how right after this. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. When you think RTC, what comes to mind? How about jobs? RTC road projects bring thousands of jobs to Washoe County, expanding and connecting Northern Nevada, growing our local economy, providing a more secure future for our residents and their families. So when you think jobs, think RTC. Your RTC, the RTC of Washoe County. My brother RJ had me believe that he knew exactly what he was taking. He did put it on a good front, but I don't think that during those times he was ever necessarily sober. 
We lost RJ at 32 to a prescription opioid overdose. All right, next up is Chewing Chloe, reading for No Place Like Home. Mark it. And action. Chloe, turn around. Okay, can we, can we reset? Okay, well, we're gonna do one more. Can we get you back on your mark? Okay, now show me those adoptable faces. Okay, guys, back to one. Get, get, someone get the ball. What you... Okay, yeah, now you sit on that side. Oh, no, no, sit. Show me some love. Wow, that's a lot of love. Okay, great, thanks for coming in. Perfect, yeah, we'll call you. I overdosed on opioids and it nearly ended my life. Thanks to someone carrying naloxone, my life is saved. Naloxone is a simple nose spray that reverses the effects of an opioid overdose. Naloxone should only be used in an emergency. To learn more, visit nvopioidresponse.org. Safety, we all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of efforts to turn around the growing crisis of domestic violence, murder, and human trafficking on our tribal lands. We've been visiting with Nevada U.S. Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. Well, we've told you about my guest shining a terribly needed spotlight on a terrible and growing problem, and we've told you about her legislative focus, but she isn't stopping there. Her Savannah's Act and Not Invisible Act would go a long way toward coordinating government efforts and establishing clear guidelines for handling violent crimes against Native American women and girls when they occur, as well as improve data collection and get tribal law enforcement better access to federal databases. But as she told that Native American law enforcement agency gathering last May, she believes even more is needed to help them do their jobs. So she is co-sponsoring the Indian Program's Advanced Appropriations Act, which would secure their funding so that the event, uh, in the event of a government shutdown, they'd still have full resources to do their jobs. And she's advocating hard for the Badges Act. Now that would provide law enforcement with improved data to solve cases involving violent crime, as well as speed up the officer hiring process and also to expand access to counseling and mental health services for officers who are dealing with job-related stress. And Senator, you told them you're also working to improve rural broadband and to modernize the 911 uh, system because many tribal uh, uh, areas, uh, they, it's harder to reach um, right. communications uh, in, in those places, correct? That's right. That's absolutely right. There are 27 tribes in Nevada. As you well know, some of these tribes are located in, ge in geographic locations sure. that are in the middle of the state, and there's not a lot of services around there, let alone broadband and other resources. But here's what I also know. Not every tribal community has law enforcement, but those that do are able to afford and have law enforcement, they don't have the equipment and the tools and the resources that are traditional, what we see in our urban or metro areas. I was just with our Las Vegas Paiutes. Uh, they have an incredible law enforcement agency, but they are able to afford it because economically they can, right, through their revenues, but not all tribes. So those law enforcement agencies and tribal law enforcement, they work together with other, the other tribes because of that. My goal is to make sure we're giving them more resources. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the resources they needed to do their jobs with respect to law enforcement, but but at the same time make sure they're, there's interoperability, they're connected, they have the tools, the resources, and most importantly for me, the training. The training sure. that's necessary to identify these types of crimes and then be able to do something about it. And uh, and also you want to make sure that they have the improved data that they need that's to right. help solve those Right crimes. now, tribal, and that, this is a key part of it, uh, quite often our tribal law enforcement cannot access federal databases mm -hmm. or even input into them. So we need to have that, again, that interaction, communication sure. between the two of them if we're really going to identify what is happening with our uh, missing and murdered Native what, American What was the women. reaction of the, these law enforcement officials to uh, your speech? What kind of mm -hmm. comments did you get after? Very uh, supportive. About? Very supportive. Uh, I think um, from uh, a T, um, we had great conversations 
Uh, they appreciate the effort. Um, what I've always told them is when I do uh, draft legislation, I want you to see it. I want to make mm -hmm. sure it is something that is going to work for you. Um, that way it's easier for me to sure. get my support, bipartisan support, and work through those issues. Did they share uh, some of their top concerns, uh, both regarding crimes against uh, the women and girls and their needs as law enforcement They do. Officials? You have to understand, because of the bifurcated jurisdiction, right, there's some federal oversight, and then uh, there is also, they're, they're uh, embedded in many of our communities. So the challenge jurisdictionally is they usually have uh, oversight over any crimes on Indian land by Native Americans. But quite often, there's white individuals, right, non-Native Americans mm -hmm. who go on to Indian land and commit crimes, and they, they uh. didn't have jurisdiction over that. We've changed that. But we also, in the state of Nevada, have created MOUs, Memorandums of Understanding, between law enforcement, tribal law enforcement, and metropolitan law enforcement, right, and communities, so we are capturing all of the crime that's going on. But more of it needs to be done, and they need more resources. There's this challenge just to get the resources they need. You know, as we're running out of time in this segment, we, we've been focused here on, uh, you know, working to save lives of those victimized um, by domestic violence and, and murder at, at times as well. But I want you to expand on the horror of human trafficking. Uh, yeah, I've done several shows on human trafficking, but I think it's worth mentioning again the statistics we brought up earlier in the program that Native Americans who experience sexual or domestic violence are far more likely to become victims of sexual tra uh, sex trafficking. That's right. So let me give you an example. Savannah's act is named after Savannah Graywin. She's from North Dakota. Uh, she was murdered. She was eight months pregnant and her child was cut out of her body. Now the child is two years old, um, I think today. Mm -hmm. But that was brought to our attention because former Senator Heidi Heitkamp from North Dakota recognize what was going on, and she's the one that really introduced Savannah's Act. And then when she was not reelected, she asked me if I would carry it for mm. her uh, along with Senator Lisa Murkowski. And I, I said, absolutely. All the work that we are doing and the work that I've done on domestic violence preven prevention, reducing violence and uh, s uh, human trafficking and reducing that, this, this was an easy for me sure. to jump on board with it. Okay, and when we return, help her help domestic violence on native lands. We're gonna tell you how you in Nevada can join her fight. That's right after this. Chronic pain is real. For those suffering, we want you to know there are options beyond opioids. These painkillers can serve a temporary medical purpose, but not without risk. And they don't address the underlying cause of the pain. The good news is you can take control of your pain management today. Ask your doctor about the dozens of non-opioid options to manage your pain and take charge of your health. Pain isn't a choice, but how you treat it could be. Visit KnowYourPainMeds.com to learn more. Nevada's direct link to Capitol Hill. Eye on Washington with Merrilee Joyce. The only statewide Nevada news show based in Washington, D.C. All the top federal matters that matter most to Nevadans. Merrily talks with our congressional delegation and other leaders about the federal news you need to know. Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce, Nevada's Eye on Capitol Hill. I got my own iPod Touch and used my dad's login to get on gambling sites. Poker is the best, but I'm losing a lot. Since I'm too young to play, they're not allowed to keep the money and my dad won't find out. That's right, isn't it? Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Just text me after. Okay. <gasps> no! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Many things in a mother's life affect her pregnancy. You can help improve the health of mothers and babies in Nevada by completing a Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System, or PRAMS, survey from the Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The survey asks new moms about their experience before, during, and after pregnancy. Responses are confidential. If you receive a PRAMS survey, please share your story. 
What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Want more federal news that affects Nevada, its businesses, and its residents? Then you need to subscribe to Nevada's Washington Watch Newsletter, your sole source of online news direct from Washington, D.C. Visit JoyceCommunications.com and subscribe today. And it is time for our closing segment of today's Eye on Washington. We've had as our special guest today, Nevada U.S. Senator. Catherine Cortez Masto. Senator, you wrote a guest editorial for Vice in which you said 84% of Native American women experience domestic violence during their lifetimes. What a frightening statistic that is. And with that statistic in mind, how can our statewide audience help you, uh, help you today in your fight? Um, what can they learn from the your website is, and yeah. what can they do when they write in? First step is coming forward. If you know of somebody within the community, they need resources, there are some resources in Nevada. Reach out to my office. I've got offices in Reno and Las Vegas. Make sure you let us know. You can call us. You can over, over or our the website. website. Yep. Uh, Cortez Masto at uh, dot Senate dot gov. Yeah, I, I think that's the first step. People don't realize the level of resources that are available. Let me say there's tons mm -hmm. on her site yeah. telling you all about this issue as well. So, But here's the thing. There's things that we have to do to change the laws. And so yeah. communicate with me either way, because if we have to change the laws to improve those resources, that's my goal. Uh, as we tape this, of mm -hmm. course, it's fall. Um, yes. What do you predict between now and the time that the Senate adjourns regarding your bills? Will the Savannah Act and the Not Invisible Act um, see passage? Or uh, I know mm -hmm. it, there's so much the Senate's doing toward right. the end of the year. So, what, is, and what kind of support are you seeing as yeah, well? Yeah, there's support. They're already. We've already had hearings on them. We're getting ready to go back to hearings to mark them up. There's bipartisan support in both the House and the Senate. So I, I am hopeful that we're going to get this done. Um, at the end of the day, I think between now and the end of this year, the VAWA reauthorization is also key. We need sure. to make sure we keep that tribal piece in there to bring those resources to our tribal communities. And you feel pretty good about that? We're fighting over it now. Yeah. And when I mean fighting, there's some, unfortunately, some of my colleagues that don't want to do that. But uh, there is bipartisan support to keep it. The House has already supported it and, and voted on it in support of it. It's up to the Senate to do the right thing by our tribal communities. you got about 15, 20 more seconds. Anything real important that you want to state about this whole issue before we close Thank today? Thank you. Just the fact that we're bringing uh, attention to it. I think people need to, if they don't, uh, know about it, educate yourself on it, know okay. what's going on, and be aware. Okay. Thanks so much for being here Thank today. You. I'll look forward to following up on this with you. Thank you. And that does wrap up today's Eye on Washington. I hope you'll join us next time for another look at federal matters that matter most to you in Nevada. In the meantime, though, we are always here for you, providing all the federal news that Nevadans need to know. Just go to our website, JoyceCommunications.com. And while you're there, check out all the federal issues that impact Nevada. You can like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Catch up with any shows you may have missed on our YouTube page. Thanks again for joining us on Eye on Washington. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington, D.C. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce. Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce airs statewide in Nevada solely due to the generosity of our sponsors. Can your company help us continue our mission to remain Nevada's top source of federal news? If you can help us help Nevadans, please visit JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW Sponsors and join us today. That's JoyceCommunications.com slash WordPress slash EOW Sponsors. Sponsors.